few back companies that you must believe can compete against the tech giants. Why do you think that some of these mega caps need to be reined in or broken up? Yeah, I mean, I, that's exactly what I've been thinking about is really just three questions. Like, why is this happening now? Because it's clearly happening. This is a level of intensity that we've never seen. We've talked about antitrust for the last decade. And I think we've had more activity in the last six months than we did in that decade. Um, and what the outcome will be is the second thing I've been thinking about. And then how does it affect me as an early stage investor? I think the why it's happening is super important um, for tech to consider. Obviously, we have wealth disparity in the country, privacy issues, and the tax avoidance issues. But I really think the impact on the elections, both for the Democrats and the Republicans, were very acute and very scary for politicians. And that's why this has become, I, I think, the only issue that Democrats and uh, Republicans agree on, which is big tech is too powerful. The Democrats feel Hillary didn't yeah, get into office because of the Russians and Facebook. And then, you know, people are blaming Trump's loss and Trump being out of the public square on Twitter. So I think that's why it's happening now. What actually it results in and how it affects my business. Like, that those are the those are the second order questions I'm really thinking about. Right. And they certainly agree both sides. But how to regulate them, that how and how to execute that is very different. Jason, I know that you know Keith Raboy, fellow VC. He was on with us yesterday. Yeah, I heard him yesterday. He yeah. said this is clearly happening. Yeah, he does not agree with you. He says that there okay. is no tech lash. It's actually fabricated, and there's no need for regulation. What do you say to that? Okay, so there's two different issues. What he's talking about is consumers are delighted right now. You know, when you go buy an Amazon Basics cable for five or six bucks and you don't feel like you're getting price gouged by, you know, an Apple store $30 cable, that's a delightful feeling. The fact that Twitter, Facebook and all these services, photo services are free, that is awesome for consumers. So consumers are not feeling loss in the moment. So now we have to take antiquated laws that do not really apply to these companies and companies that are so sophisticated they kind of know how to route around consumer harm. You just make products free or you keep making them cheaper. So you kind of win that argument. But I think what Keith was not addressing is the sentiment in the country. And that's equally important. The fact that there's wealth disparity, the fact that people feel um, their privacy is being invaded and that they don't have control of their data, and they look at the tax avoidance by these big companies, those things have given... I think a lot of ammunition to politicians mm. who were totally delighted with these companies until those politicians felt like, wow, if they can take Trump off all the platforms and take away all his power, well, they could do that to me. I think that's actually what's causing this to happen right now. Right. Yeah, th uh, these politicians are looking at it going, whoa, this is too much power. <laughs> yeah, Jason, um, I I've been skeptical of some of these antitrust actions because I'm not sure that they're all framing um, monopoly and monopoly power in e exactly a, a logical and reasonable way. And I think a judge came down um, on that side of it a couple weeks ago. But I don't see yeah. what Biden is doing here as antitrust. I look at some of these things, right to repair, that's good for consumers, marketplaces and bearing, uh, uh, barring unfair methods of competition. I mean, it's hard to argue with that. Uh, data rules on surveillance and data accumulation. I mean, you don't have to be a monopoly for that to protect consumers. So a lot of that's good. But this on M&A and greater scrutiny of acquisitions, even of small companies, that seems to me like the thing that could really damage the ecosystem potentially. Because, I mean, back when Facebook bought Instagram, Instagram was tiny. It was like a dozen yeah. people. I, yeah. I find it hard to imagine what the argument would have been to prevent that acquisition. Yeah, I, this is a super astute point, John. Like, the acquisition area is a way you could really ankle these big companies because they're used to being able to buy or build anything innovative that comes into the marketplace. 